And that was a survey of unemployed households in Liverpool. And uh, it, it was clearly written, I, as far as I can see, as a commission prior to Lloyd George's reform to 1911. So I think it had a very direct influence on the 1911 reforms by his survey of the unemployed. And it's, it's quite a, it's an interesting, it's interesting all kinds of ways we started, but contrast the 1899, or at least the, the story of 1899, only using one investigator, he had actually 60 investigators going around all the working class households in York to identify the unemployed. And I can go on about it. It's, it, it's, uh, he, actually, he identified, I think, about 600 unemployed, unemployed uh, men, mostly, although, not, although he did actually uh, search for women as well. And it was an, isn't it very interesting a topical focus on youth unemployment, where um, of the 155, I think it was, uh, a youth that he found to be unemployed, about 60 were unemployed because, because they were ill, disabled, or uh, they have just more morbidity, not, nothing to do with bad families or anything else. It resonates, of course, with our current situation with the possible collapse of the NHS, and uh, I brought, brought with, with, us, with me a, a leaflet about the NHS, which I think has been, where's it? I've got some of them, where are the others? You've got some of them, plenty in the back. Plenty in the back, okay. But that, that's what, I've just a quick commentary. Now I can turn to this, is that I think something that's been missing from all the studies of inequality and poverty worldwide, it's not just England, but I'll focus on England, the fact we actually don't count the poorest people in, 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 our, in, our, in, our, in, in surveys. If you think of the main major problem with the household survey, which I think a lot of people have yet, yet to understand, is that household surveys don't include people who aren't in households. I know that sounds stupid, but I can tell you that the vast majority of uh, survey designers don't realise that simple point. So they, they admit homeless populations. They also admit institutionalised populations. This is all by design, nothing, nothing to do with difficult design. And they admit mobile populations by design, by people who go out of household address. And in practice, at least worldwide, though not so much in England, they under underrepresent those who are fragile, disjointed, or multiple occupancy households. They underrepresent them, underrepresent some slum populations, just simply difficult to go in there and difficult to reach areas. In, in Britain, I'm sticking to Britain because of. The, there's been a quite well-known analysis of econ economic inequality by Professor John Hills of LSE for the so Cabinet Social Exclusion Unit. He, he, very unusually, he actually bothered to address the problem of uh, non-household populations uh, affecting the, his estimates and concluded there was no problem. I think that he was completely wrong and he's now admitted it to me at least. We have, of homeless, we've got about 85,000 households assessed as unintentionally homeless in, in, in Britain and plus about approximately 1,500 one, 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 one rough sleepers. Crisis, the, 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 you know, the charity, however, estimates are 350,000 households actually homeless for staying with family or friends. I haven't included them because it's, it's a, spe it's a speculative number, but it probably would have been on top. More seriously, the institutionalized, we've got 160, about 160,000 adults in hospitals on any one night. Given that 29, 30% live alone, that means a minimum of 48,000 are wrongly 48,000 households are wrongly counted as empty on any one day. So that the people go to a survey, I'll say it's empty, they're wrong, they're wrong. Care homes, you've got 420,000 in publicly or provided care homes in the UK. You've got 108,000, well, it, it was when I looked, it's probably gone down now since we've reduced the defence budget, but 108,000 service personnel that are serving abroad are living in barracks, they're not on the surveys. You've got 85,000 in prisons, they aren't surveyed. Refugees, they're officially 240,000. But of course, the unofficial numbers, I have no clue how many there are, but I, let's take about unless it's double, it's probably more. There's about oh, 83,000 gypsies and, and, and uh, Romany travellers, and about 8,000 new age travellers, making 90,000. There's 22,000 kids in care. I'm not equating that for fragile, but disjointed households. Those, those people missing, that, that comes to about 1.3 million people of house people are missing out of any sam possible sampling frame for a survey in Britain. So that, that's, um, what is that? It's about 2% uh, of the population are missing from this, upon, but it will not never be surveyed. How many of those are poor? Well, I'm giving you rough estimates and go on about it, but if, uh, I don't want to take all your time, but, but I'm estimating that the final figure is that of the 1.2, 1.2, 1 1.3 million missing people, of 550,000 at least, I think, I, I, at least, I think these conservative estimates are from the poorest SR. 
which means there's a course, and there should, should of course only be 120,000 rather than 150,000 if, if, if it was a random sample or a, a non-biased sample of the population. But in fact, it's 550,000 uh, after the poorest SR, meaning that all estimates of inequality in Britain are biased against, uh, are biased and miss out in the poorest. It's, uh, it's uh, final, final suggestion, but it, it's maybe not a huge, maybe not seen a huge problem in England, but in my estimate worldwide is that we've got 400 million of the poorest of the poor uh, are missing from the world population. It's just, we don't know where they are, we don't know who they are, we don't know what their conditions are. And that, that, that's in accounts to, that means that about 25% uh, of the bottom quintile of the world population are just missing. Uh, any estimates you've heard of, you've probably heard of the Millennium Development Goals and so-called progress towards it, they're all nonsense simply because we don't know where we started from in the first place and we certainly don't know where we are.